As Jim said, my name is Adam Falk. I'm a mobile news editor at the Wall Street Journal. Uh, I'm currently producing vertical videos for Facebook um, that are pretty heavy in the explainer format. Um, we're trying out some new stuff there. But before that, I joined the journal to launch a mobile app that I'll tell you about in just a little bit. Um, but what I really want to focus on today is this key issue for the journal and really for paywalled media in general. Uh, this is uh, a little simple graphic explaining what the ideal distribution method for the Wall Street Journal looks like. We produce journalism. We put it on our phones and on the desktop, and we put it in print. And then people who already are keen to read our stuff pay for it and find it themselves. And we have to do nothing else. Um, as we all know, that is in no way what it looks like. Um, even for, even for us, behind the paywall, we have to do things like produce stories and let our audience know when those stories are up, whether that's on social media or through push alerts or various other things. But then at that same time, we also have to be using social and push alerts and even our audience as it currently exists to try to get new users and to try to grow that audience because the only way our business model continues to work is if people continue to subscribe and new subscribers sign on. So yeah, so it's pretty messy. And, and the thing about it is we really do have these two sort of groups. We have our subscribers, and then we have our, um, if we want to call them, not yet subscribers. Um, <laughs> and so the question I really want to address is how can we satisfy both of them? And I believe that this is a perfect topic because I honestly believe that distribution and what we've learned from it so far and what we can continue to learn from it will help us address this problem and um, help us bring both groups well, keep one and bring another into the fold. First, I want to talk about uh, what's news. This is what I came to the journal to help work on, and this is a product, um, unlike some of the other ones that I'm going to talk about, that are very specifically targeted at our subscribers. So we built this app. It's a News Digest app. There's 10 stories in the app at any one given time, presented in reverse chronological order, constantly updating. It's meant to be sort of like your Wall Street Journal fix. Um, you can go to the app multiple times a day, and everything should look pretty fresh and new, and the main stories of the day are highlighted, and there's nothing irrelevant, or at least we're trying to make sure there's nothing irrelevant in the app. Um, and we really focus this on what we call our core journal readers, and that's people who are really into, as you might guess, business, markets, finance news. So when we launched in August 2015, we launched with uh, this here in the middle, this is called Markets Data Center. Um, and it, you know, you've probably all seen something similar to this, but basically it allows um, some of our power users, to borrow that phrase, our super users, uh, to follow the indexes they care about, some of the stocks they care about, so it gives them the reason to keep coming back. We also have a follow function, which you can kind of see here, um, that allows people to track certain topics and certain news stories. And what we found uh, what's new, from What's News, and we've been doing it for a little while now, is that um, perhaps unsurprisingly, we do have a devoted readership. Uh, those core journal users were uh, looking for more journal content. We found that they were coming back multiple times a day, spending roughly 10 minutes with What's News. And for a product that really is uh, sort of meant to be a quick scroll and a quick update, that was pretty good for us. Um, but one of the things that we found, and one of the things that I think we've learned and brought back, or are currently trying to bring back to our site, is uh, what I like to call our What's Newsletters. And uh, basically, these are two stories that we produce, one in the morning and then one in the evening, right before the markets open, and then at about 9.30 at night, that both get you ready for the day, tell you what economic data is coming out, tell you what stories to watch for, that kind of thing, give you some stories to read if nothing's going on. Um, and then at the end of the day, they catch you up on the day's biggest headlines, that kind of thing. So pretty basic newsletter format, but presented in an app um, that then gets people back into the app so they read more. And so we saw traffic spike then. And now what we're doing is we're taking that out of What's News, out of the What's News environment, and putting it on our uh, main app, which has obviously a much wider audience, perhaps less devoted than our What's News audience. But what we're doing is learning from those core journal readers about what works. And that's really the point of What's News. I think we're trying to learn from some of our most loyal readers what some of our other readers might like to see. Another thing that worked for What's News is our push alert strategy. So we really took advantage of every character we had to, pri to try to find the much, as most contact, or as much context, excuse me, as we possibly could in each alert. Uh, so, and, and tailored to the audience, right? So, for example, if, um, you know, if the Kraft Unilever deal, we might not just push alert 
that this is happening. We probably wait a minute, see what the stock is doing, because that's what a lot of these users are going to care about. Um, and we might alert on the stock movement as a way to get people into the app and sort of differentiate ourselves from the Bloombergs and the CNBCs of the world. Um, and maybe even come five, 10 minutes later and be the, the top thing, the top alert on people's phones because people don't always swipe through immediately. And we did find that people would swipe through our alerts more than they would swipe through the main apps. Now onto something totally different. Uh, not, a, not, a, not an amazing transition, but this, this product is built for a much wider audience. And this is what I'm currently doing and have been working on for a little over a month now. And these are videos that are really tailored for Facebook. Um, so what does that mean? That means we have 90 seconds is roughly the viewing time. We have uh, very graphic heavy text on screen, no anchors, no, no voice track at all. Um, and this is really like us testing, seeing what some of our non-subscribers on Facebook and some of our subscribers are willing to watch and what, they're, what they like. So these stories are typically related to a story on the site. They might not be um, like exactly the same. And in fact, we'd rather them not be like the Getty image retelling of something we already have a perfectly great tech story on on our website. We would rather, would rather them be like sidebars, things that you might want to know more about. Um, what we've learned so far is that these videos that are made with social in mind first do work. Uh, we're seeing better engagement on these videos than we were on the standard videos we were producing for Wall Street Journal and then just porting to Facebook. Um, they also get uh, people watching longer, which is nice as well. Um, of course, this isn't exactly groundbreaking. Um, you know, if, if you're only thinking about one audience, hopefully you're doing better with it. Um, but we are able to learn, as I said before, a lot more about our non-subscribers, because we have a lot more people who will come to our Facebook page who don't necessarily pay for the print Wall Street Journal or pay for the website. And so we're able to learn what is keeping them engaged and what is keeping them interested. But really, this started with uh, what we were doing for Snapchat. So last year, we launched on Snapchat Discover. We were uh, the first US newspaper to release a daily edition on Snapchat. There's about eight to 10 stories per edition. And this, uh, like what's news, it might be a little surprising considering what you think the Snapchat audience is, um, is we tend to focus on business and um, business adjacent news still. And you know, we're just sort of testing to see what people are interested in. And one of the main reasons that we joined Snapchat uh, was because like I said, because of that audience, because they are uh, younger and uh, more female than our website and our apps, as you can probably imagine. Um, so I'll show you one of those videos, too, so you can compare. This is an edition that we did last week. And these stories do, um, sort of unlike the stuff we're doing on Facebook, these stories do run and run more similarly uh, to stories that we have on our website. So there's a lot of shared resources there, um, but it is custom production. Uh, I should say What's News is a very old vertical that exists in the Wall Street Journal. So we, we use that, we've used that name for a couple of different things, slightly confusingly, but. <laughs> House of the Day is a, is a feature that we run on our site um, that generates a lot of, a lot of traffic online because people love clicking through slideshows of homes that look like these. <laughs> All right, so that's an that's a example of what Snapchat usually looks like. And on Fridays, we do a feature um, where we focus in on one story. Um, and what we've learned, what we've learned from uh, the kind of stuff that we're doing on Snapchat is that there is a different audience. <laughs> they are younger, they are more female, but they are still much 
they are still very loyal to us. Like we have a lot of viewers that come back every single day to watch the WSJ editions or subscribe to us on Snapchat. And this has really helped us explore other storytelling methods. I mean, we, we discover that we have an audience here, so that validates us spending time on Instagram stories and various other platforms. And really, what I think is uh, perhaps the coolest part about the stuff we're doing for Snapchat is how it's changed our website. Um, after we did Snapchat, we put into development and launched a vertical video player on our website. Uh, probably something that we would have talked about doing at some point anyway, but this really helped push that along. And now, I mean, I'm reaping the benefit of it for the stuff that I produce for Facebook. We're able to instantly share it across platforms. And that brings me to really the key point of my presentation. Um, and that is, yeah, we have these two groups. We have our subscribers, and then we have our non-subscribers, people are thinking about subscribing. And at WSJ, we are using our off-platform storytelling on Facebook and Snapchat, and even like on-platform storytelling with What's News, although that's such a specific audience of our larger audience, to help inform what we're doing on our bigger platforms, on our website, in our apps, and in print, I guess, as well, although uh, my videos are not going in print. Um, and it's really helping us inform what our loyal readers like and helping us inform what our not yet loyal readers are also interested in. Ideally, learning stuff from all these platforms and the way that we distribute them will help us better own our storytelling. And I don't mean physically own it, like hold the paper or anything like that. Um, I mean, if you take that jobs video, for example, that is a topic, the unemployment rate, that's a topic that people might want to come to the Wall Street Journal to learn more about. And I think we should be using these platforms to learn how to own the stories people already expect us to own. People are already searching, and if they see us at the top when it comes to explaining what's going on at the unemployment rate, that's going to drive readership and hopefully drive people back to subscribe to us. So while we can't really own anything or convert everybody that we see, um, we just want to be there when they're looking for us. And that's really core to what we're doing. And uh, I. I, I really think you know the more the more that we put ourselves out there, and the more that we learn from these platforms, the more we can bring back to everyone. So, thank you so much for your time. Questions? Questions for Adam? I love this. I mean, I, I love that phrase, learning to own. And it, you know, it kind of plays into the sub theme of this is what do you own and what do you really want to own? And I think right. asking yourself those very questions. Well, yeah, you know, the, the, the journal has, I mean, for a long time, all they owned was business finance and markets news. And then, you know, there was this push that, to have a voice on everything. And so we expanded into a lot of other types of reporting and our whole newspaper look and setup changed and we wanted to also be your primary source for world news and we wanted to be your primary source for politics news and all of that kind of stuff as well. And I think what we're seeing is that we want to have a voice on these topics, of course, but we want to be the authoritative voice on the things that people are expecting us to be that voice on. And Econ News is a perfect example of that. Oh, hang on just a second. Question in the back. I don't know her. <laughs> I haven't even said hi to you in person, hi. Hi. <laughs> um, I think you said that your Snapchat audience is more female. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about how that affects your content on Snapchat, like the decisions you guys are making to both cater to but grow outside of that audience? Right. Um, I would love to speak to that. Unfortunately, I'm not, I, I'm not part of the, the Snapchat team specifically, but it is, a, it is conversations, we are having similar conversations on Facebook. So, you know, we're looking at really uh, specific data, and this isn't necessarily related to male versus female breakdown, but we are looking at data about how, what people watch and how people watch it. So the reason that text is on all these videos is because you guys just watched it with sound, but 90% of the people who watched that video on Facebook did not watch it with sound. Um, as, to, as to how we're uh, addressing the, the demographics, I think story choice is probably it. I mean, we're not doing, um, we've done some original content for Snapchat. We did an original Snapchat documentary um, about the opioid crisis, which I don't know, isn't like exec exactly geared to younger females, but, um, but it is informing like some of the stories we'll choose from our site. Um, and some of the kinds of business news that we think that audience might be interested in. Do you know how your um, sales team is pricing Snapchat? Is it uh, by size of audience or clicks? Or I'm not sure. Okay. 
Sorry. <laughs> it's a good question. They don't give me the key data. Darn it, right? Adam Falk, thank you very much. Thank really you. appreciate it.